and welcome to x-ray review in this video we are going to dive into one of the most common causes of chronic knee pain which is degenerative arthritis degenerative osteoarthritis often simply referred to as osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease is the most common form of arthritis and typically affects older adults this is a chronic joint condition characterized by the gradual breakdown and deterioration of the cartilage that cushions and protects the knee joint this thinning and breaking down of the cartilage contributes to a loss of joint space. Over time, the articular surfaces can develop osteophyte formation, or bone spurs, which alter normal joint mechanics. This can lead to pain and swelling of the knee, as well as a host of other clinical symptoms we will discuss in detail. So now let's look at this degenerative process on an x-ray and let's start with a normal knee. I'm going to add a little bit of graphics here just so I can illustrate the different radiographic findings. Starting with joint space narrowing, one of the hallmark signs of knee osteoarthritis on x-rays is the narrowing of the joint space between the bones. This occurs due to the gradual loss of articular cartilage, which serves as the cushion between the bones. The joint space narrowing is most commonly observed in the medial or inner compartment of the knee, followed by the lateral or outer and patellofemoral compartments. You may also see the formation of osteophytes. As the body attempts to repair the damaged joint, it can lead to the formation of osteophytes, also known as bone spurs. These are bony outgrowths that develop along the joint margins, particularly at the edges of the joint space. Osteophytes can contribute to joint pain and restriction of motion. Subchondral sclerosis refers to an increase in bone density in the subchondral region of the bone, which is beneath the cartilage. It appears as a denser, whiter area on the x-ray. So I'm going to change the factors here just so you can see but these white lines on the edges of that articular surface of the medial compartment of the knee um, represent that subchondral sclerosis. And this is a response to the increased stress and altered mechanics caused by cartilage loss. In some cases of degenerative arthritis, it can lead to development of subchondral cysts or geodes, which are fluid-filled sacs within the bone just beneath the cartilage. These cysts can contribute to pain and discomfort. As the joint undergoes changes due to arthritis, there can be alterations in the alignment of the knee. This might include a varus deformity, where the knee bows inward, or a valgus deformity, where the knee bows outward. More advanced cases of degenerative arthritis can lead to osteochondral defects, which are areas where both the cartilage and the underlying bone are damaged or worn away. These defects appear as irregularities or depressions in the joint surfaces. You can also have a chunk of the cartilage and bone that can break off and float around in the joint. A joint effusion may also be present Inflammation associated with arthritis can lead to the accumulation of excess fluid within the joint, causing a joint effusion. Significant effusion might be visible as soft tissue swelling around the knee. From a radiographic perspective, a joint effusion of the knee is best visualized on the lateral view. Joint effusions of the knee typically occur in the region superior to the patella. Compare the density of the soft tissues above and below the patella. The area of the increased density superior to the patella represents the joint effusion. Over time, chronic degenerative arthritis can lead to joint deformities, such as joint space collapse and bone remodeling, resulting in a changed appearance of the joint surfaces. X-rays are an essential tool in evaluating the severity of degenerative disease, monitoring its progression, and guiding treatment decision. Often it's going to be the first diagnostic imaging of the knee to make that diagnosis. 
However, it's important to note that clinical assessment and other imaging modalities such as MRI may also be utilized to provide a comprehensive understanding of the condition and exclude internal derangement. While degenerative osteoarthritis is a chronic condition that can't be completely reversed, proper management and treatment can significantly alleviate symptoms and slow down the progression of the disease, allowing individuals to maintain an active and fulfilling life. Remember, if you suspect you have knee arthritis or are experiencing joint pain, it's advisable to consult a healthcare professional for proper diagnosis and guidance. Now let's look at some examples of osteoarthritis in the knee. This first example is a classic presentation of knee osteoarthritis with severe loss of the medial femoral tibial joint space, mild osteophyte formation at the medial aspect of the medial femoral condyle and medial tibial plateau, as well as relative preservation laterally, and um, then some alignment changes. And this again, classic knee osteoarthritis. In this example, you'll see a similar presentation of loss of medial femoral tibial joint space bilaterally, as well as that osteophyte formation and similar alignment changes. This individual has severe loss of the medial femoral tibial joint space, as well as significant patellofemoral arthrosis with large osteophyte formation on the femoral condyles, as well as both poles of the patella. On this example, you can see significant osteophyte formation at the superior pole of the patella and femoral condyles. Uh, so this would be severe patellofemoral arthrosis as well as at the medial femoral tibial joint space. So there is a lot going on in these images. And this is the same patient. You'll notice an increase in patient body habitus by the size of the sub-Q fat. Uh, there is significant loss of joint space bilaterally. Uh, note the alignment changes, the changes to the articular surfaces of the femoral condyle and tibial plateau. Uh, this large soft tissue calcification is actually within the joint. Uh, these are intraarticular loose bodies, which can be when the, um, the cartilage breaks off. Uh, the hyaline cartilage lining the joint breaks off and is free floating and then calcifies inside of the joint. So this patient has got a lot of significant findings going on and will need to consult with an orthopedic surgeon. One radiographic finding of degeneration can be seen with chondrocalcinosis, which is a thin calcification inside of the uh, tibial femoral joint spaces and you can see that finding bilaterally and this can be associated with lots of different conditions uh, but one of them is a degenerative finding and on this example you can see the loss of femoral tibial joint space medially and osteophyte formation at the medial and lateral aspects of the femoral tibial joint space this individual has moderate to severe loss of the joint spaces bilaterally, as well as significant osteophyte formation, alteration to the joints, and then intraarticular loose body formation and patellofemoral osteophyte formation. This patient has tricompartmental degenerative joint disease, which means it's within the femoral tibial joint spaces as well as the patellofemoral joint spaces. One of the main causes of osteoarthritis is trauma. And you can see this normal knee with no significant degenerative changes or loss of joint space. And on the contralateral side, uh, you can see loss of the medial femoral tibial joint space, alteration to the medial femoral condyle surface, possibly suggestive of an osteochondral defect, and then alteration to that joint and uh, osseous deformity. What's a little different about this view is that the degenerative findings are on the lateral femoral tibial joint space rather than what we normally have seen on the medial side. And of course it can occur on the lateral side, it's just much less common 
and more likely associated with things like previous trauma. Here is a lateral view of the knee showing exuberant uh, osteophyte formation at the superior pole of the patella. In this view we're looking at a patellofemoral sunrise view which gives an axial projection of that patellofemoral joint and this view is very good for evaluating the articular surfaces of the patella and distal femur. Now let's look at a simplified overview of the common clinical manifestations of degenerative arthritis. Pain is the most prevalent symptom of knee arthritis. It usually develops gradually and is often described as a dull ache that worsens with activity and improves with rest. The pain may be most noticeable after prolonged periods of inactivity, such as when waking up in the morning or sitting for an extended period of time. Stiffness in the knee joint is often experienced, especially after periods of rest. Morning stiffness is common and may gradually improve as the individual starts moving through the day. The knee might feel stiff and resistant to bending or extending fully. As the disease progresses, the affected knee's range of motion may become restricted. It may become difficult to fully extend or bend the knee, leading to reduced flexibility. As we've reviewed, swelling can occur due to inflammation in response to cartilage damage. The knee may appear swollen and feel puffy, especially after periods of activity. Crepitus refers to a crackling or grating sensation that can be felt or heard when moving the knee joint. This sensation is caused by the irregular surfaces of the bones rubbing against each other due to the cartilage loss. Some individuals with knee osteoarthritis might experience a sense of instability or giving way in the knee. This feeling is often related to changes in joint mechanics caused by the cartilage damage. Activities that involve repetitive knee movements, such as walking, climbing stairs, or squatting can exacerbate pain. Engaging in high impact activities may also lead to increased discomfort. Now how about a few sample multiple choice questions? Which of the following is a radiographic finding of degenerative arthritis? Is it osteophyte formation, soft tissue swelling, cortical disruption, marginal syndesmophytes, or marginal erosions? And the correct answer here is A, osteophyte formation. True or false? Over time, Chronic degenerative arthritis can lead to joint deformities, such as joint space collapse and bone remodeling, resulting in changed appearance of the joint surfaces. And yes, this is a true statement. Which of the following is a common clinical symptom of degenerative arthritis? Is it increased risk of fracture? pain and stiffness, joint ankylosis, infection, or increased risk of gout. And the correct answer here is B, pain and stiffness. True or false? One of the hallmark signs of knee osteoarthritis on x-ray is the narrowing of the joint space between the bones. And this is true. Which of the following is not a radiographic finding of degenerative arthritis? Is it joint space narrowing, osteophyte formation, subchondral sclerosis, pain, or joint alignment changes or deformities? And the incorrect answer here is pain. While it is a symptom of degenerative arthritis, it's not a radiographic finding. 
All right. Well, thank you for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Any questions, feel free to put them below. And thanks again.